Welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Well, it's another day. Day six. One of the best days. Well, not really. Anyway, let's talk about what's been going on. Now, I have told you I work a lot. I get home, I try to get on, shoot a video, and then I'll edit it in the morning to get it up and running. That's the way I'm doing it for IAE, but that's not the way it's going to be in the future. But there is something happening in the game. Elevators not working, lack of oxygen in different places, killing people. And this is happening over and over again throughout the day, which is definitely reducing my opportunity and ability to create exceptional Star Citizen content. I'll get past this, I promise. And it will be very quickly because Freefly will be over soon. As we've seen in previous days, sometimes a manufacturer just doesn't have enough vehicles to fill a hull. And that's okay, but it really isn't. Because I really still am very critical about IAE. I know everybody gets on, they're doing a video every day that's really cool and it's good for their channel, but it's stupid. I gotta come here every single day to see different ships. No, I don't, but if you're brand new, you would. And sometimes it just is mind boggling why they are continuing this. It must be successful for them, but it's still stupid. It's disrespectful of the time that your players have. And I hope in the future, when dynamic server meshing comes in, that they rethink this, that they combine it into just a few days maybe, and just extend them over a couple of days, because you could fill the hall like, they could have had all these manufacturers in the same hall as RSI. Because all those halls on the outside were empty. So, I, I just wish things were different. Anyway, this is small manufacturer day. You have manufacturers like Consolidated Outland with the Mustang Nomad and Pioneer. You have Kruger with the Merlin and Archimedes. You have Argo with a whole host of different utility vehicles. And you have Grey Cat with the buggies and racing buggies and fun things that you can buy. When you say small manufacturers, it, it's not that they don't produce a lot of vehicles across the UEE. Argo, it's, it's hard to imagine you not being able to find a raft, a mole, a SRV, a, a MPUV somewhere in the verse or everywhere in the verse. I think the Star Citizen verse would die without some of these vehicles. And they're just amazing. And the Raft, which was a so-so ship in the beginning, is a mainstay of that late beginning or early mid-game of hauling. And it's just a great ship. I don't own mine anymore. I'll probably pick it up in-game at this point or just buy it back because my buyback is like $88. And that's something I just want to jump on if I start to find that it is giving me that experience that I want. If I do get it back, I'll probably send it down to Arena as her mid-level hauling ship. All right, the MPUV, multi-purpose utility vehicle. This one is the same vehicle all around. All they're doing is adding a module on it. Now, the way modularity works in the Star Citizen universe right now is if you have a modular ship, and you have three modules that could go on it, you have to build three distinctive ships. It's not like you could just change out parts on it at this point. Hopefully that happens in the future. That's one of the main reasons that a very dedicated modular ship like the Endeavor isn't in the game yet or won't be for a very long time. But this one is the shuttle. You'll use it to get back and forth between dock and your capital ship. This one is a tractor. So if you need to tow large boxes or disabled ships, this would be great. And of course you have a cargo for a small cargo. Think like a helicopter or a Greyhound going out to a carrier. First ship we're going up to over here is the Mole. The Mole is a perfect four person ship. You can do it with three, you could actually do it with two, but it's better with four, pilot and three miners. It's got a great interior and it is a blast to take out your friends and go mining. This is a great ship to work up to. If you were the person that wanted to be in the mining industry and was going to be doing it with your org and you had a number of people, it might be good to purchase it, but I still am 100% all behind the 
buy the least expensive ship and earn them in game unless your intent is to help fund the game. I don't intend to go in and out of every single one of these ships, and I think that the design language of Argo is pretty intact. I think this is the tractor. It is a little bit different than the interior of the raft, but it still gives me that feeling that CIG was trying to make it a believable ship that you would take on a long distance trip. Now this ship is indeed the triple A vessel of the Star Citizen universe. This and probably the Starfarer are going to be the ones that I believe that you're going to see the fuel rats with most often, or maybe the Vulcan when it first com when it comes out. This is pretty cool in its design language, but I still find the placement of buttons and the intuitiveness of being able to find your way in and out of spaceships for the first time is a little bit broken. Now I look all around for different buttons and finally I find the one that will let me get out of the ship and we can find a way down. Sorry about that dramatic pause. Thought it was going to be a little bit quicker, folks. Let's walk over to one of my favorite vessels that I had to melt because I just had to have a Perseus. And this is the raft. I could earn it in game. It's not that expensive. And my buyback, I believe, is only $88 at this point. Um, maybe $110, but it's $88 for a different reason. Maybe a coupon or something. I'm not sure. But this is a really nice ship. In the beginning, you couldn't do anything with it. I mean, it was... It has 96, I believe it is, uh, 96 SCU, so it, it's right in that mid-level. It carries 32 SCU boxes, 32, 64, 128 maybe? Maybe it's 128. I'm a little bit off on what this might be. But it's got that perfect mid-level SCU limit, and it really does have a nice interior. I guess I am going in and out of every ship. I was really tired when I got back from work yesterday. But this one is that first departure from the way that ships were getting designed for me that I saw. And I didn't buy the raft initially because I really wanted to be in hauling. In fact, I never did until recently. I bought it because the interior made sense. And in the beginning, you felt for the elevator every time or the second floor, but things have been fixed. And I really like the way the ship looks inside. I can't say it's one of my favorites, but it is one of my favorites in its class. Doors go up and down, lots of components we don't have in the game yet, and we can walk right into more of the engineering area. And we'll see lots of boxes and lots of different things that you can push, open, take out, whatever. So I know this is probably over already by the time you watch my video, but I really didn't want you to watch me hang around that ship for five minutes just oogling over it. These are the different, I guess you'd call them dump trucks, pickup trucks, uh, loading trucks, utility vehicles that Argo makes. Each one a little bit different, carry cargo, tow things, all sorts of wonderful little tiny ships. And there's only one here that I would even suggest that people work towards at first, and that's the ATLS. I'm not going to call it the Atlas because maybe there'll be a ship called the Atlas in the future, but this is the Ripley exosuit from Alien. And this is something that was promised to us for a really long time, and I believe they probably made it real fast, but held on to it for a while into 3.24.2 was released. I think that's when this came out. That way you could actually move around your heavy boxes really fast. And I do say, don't spend the $40 unless you really want to support the game, which I thank you for. Just buy it in game. It's not that expensive. So lots of different utility vehicles. Really nice. Oogle at them, rent them, play with them, and tell me down below in the comments what you think of them. So I didn't own any of those vehicles. I spent a few moments renting them all, maybe more than a few moments, and I decided to cut that out. So we're just gonna walk over to Consolidated Outlands Hall. And the middle ship over here and the two flanking vehicles, I've had a love-hate relationship since they were introduced. Currently, the Nomad is one of my favorite premium starter ships. 
nobody could talk me out of it. It's easy to load, it's fun to fly, and it has a certain bit of character to me. Now, I sent mine to Arena. This is the one that she uses most often. The hover quad has gotten better over time. In the beginning, it was just a death trap. I guess I'll rent one and see how it is today. All right, I'm going to start talking not about the Nomad because we're going to have a video about that, but the Mustangs, okay? And we're going to talk about the Mustangs and go in and out of them while I'm talking about them. So the Mustang is one of those ships that I fell in love with real early. It had a much different design in the beginning, one that I felt, and even today, might be a little bit better looking than this, but this is much better in operation. The original didn't have landing gear, it had skids on the wings, and if you broke off a wing, you couldn't land, so this was done to give us the opportunity to not have that happen. This really does have a shared design language almost with the with the Vanguard. And to me, that that really didn't make it a consolidated outline. Though so maybe one of the Aegis Dynamics designers came over to Consolidated Outland in the beginning and, you know, just shared some ideas and that's why it looks like this. That, that could be in lore, right? And then maybe there was this big battle for IP infringement, like stealing IP. Who knows? Um, the owner of Consolidated Outland is a very, um, let's say, arrogant billionaire, trillionaire, whatever, kind of like Elon Musk, okay? So, like, he's really smart and everything, but really, you know, arrogant, really narcissistic. It, Maybe that's what's going on, right? Maybe he just said, yeah, I could just steal it because I could pay off the difference. We're in the beta right now. The beta makes no sense to me. It's by the time you pay for this, you could already be in a ship like the Intrepid that does everything this does better. So who knows what they're going to do with this as they do gold passes and everything. The beta is supposed to be an explorer, right? You're supposed to get out there, be able to live in it and be able to go and see different things. But really the range, the survivability of these ships doesn't speak to me like I'm gonna bring it into the pyro system when a Cutlass could do it better, right? So the first Mustang I purchased was the Delta. The Delta is the military version of it. And I still have that in my hangar because it's unique and I'm hoping that over time the stealth aspect of it, which is really just a special armor, becomes important and work. But currently, there's so many better ships than the Mustang. Some people will say, start off with a Mustang Alpha. I did. You can do it. It works. Or start off with an Aurora. It works. And what I'll say is, spend the extra $20. Get an Intrepid. Get a, um, get a Titan if you want to, or a Cutlass. I think the Cutlass is one of the better, slightly more expensive ships that you could start off in. But if you just want to get the most return on investment, a Mustang Alpha is a really good start. And that's on the other side, right? So we have the Gamma, which I believe is the racer, which I've never raced. It's really fast. I have an Omega because somebody gave it to me who bought an AMD card way back when and the Omega to me. Same thing as this, just a different paint scheme. So let's get on the other side and just point out the other two because I was talking about them the most. And over here, you'll see the Delta, which is this beautiful green Mustang. And to me, it has a weapon system that made no sense, which was the dumb fire missiles. And I, I, I just, I never understood what they were thinking with that. Maybe they're better now. Like, if you could line up a shop back in the day, they were devastating. But I never take the ship out. It's hanger candy to me. And waiting for me to finally have that last bit of discontent with it to use it as an LTI token for something else. And this is the Alpha. And this is one of the recommended ships to start with. It has a four SCU box underneath, I think, or maybe it's three. You can crawl into it. You used to be able to access the internal storage by doing that. I doubt you still can. You could put a one SCU or one eighth SCU box in there and 
fill it up with some stuff if you need to. It's good for doing early, early bounty hunter missions. And you could do some box runs in it. The boxes fit in there rather nicely. But I, I would say that for any of the early starter ships, the Aurora or the Mustang, they're really just going to be in your hands for a few days at most as you make money to jump up to the next tier. I'm sure my statements from now contradict what I've said years ago when I was using the Mustang Delta to get through Arena Commander. And all I have to say is things change over time, so be careful what you think is great because by the time the game actually goes live, it might not be so great anymore. We descend down to the lower floor of the IAE showroom. We come upon Kruger's entries into today's show. And this is the Merlin and Archimedes, both tied to a constellation. So the Merlin will come standard with an Aquila or an Andromeda, and the Archimedes with the Phoenix. These are great ships to fly. They're also racers, and they're really just meant to disrupt any attackers that are coming in at your constellation and give the opportunity for the gunners and pilot to draw beads on the attackers. They're pretty cool. They have these giant Gatling guns in the nose. And I, all I have to say is, these aren't ships that you're going to buy, but they're definitely ships that you could rent for a day, go out and have fun. They're cool, but without a quantum drive or a jump drive, they really are tied to whatever ship you put them in. Maybe you could put a bunch in a Polaris. That would be fun, right? We're just going to buy one or rent one just for the hell of it. In today's Hollow Hall, I expect to see one and only one ship because I don't think there's any other ships coming from other manufacturers. That would be the Consolidated Outland Pioneer. Now, if you hoped to get one and didn't, it's probably because there were thousands of bots trying to buy them and sell them on the black market. But this is a great ship. It's going to be the base builder. And if you don't have one already for your organization, you might want to try each and every time that this comes up for sale. I am not sure how much this is going to be in game or if it's even going to be available to purchase in game. This may turn out to be like the military ships where you have to get the blueprint and manufacture all the parts for it and then manufacture the ship by itself. Now the last part of today's show is Grey Cat and here is the buggy that they gave us so long ago. This thing used to be about five bucks and you'd be able to drive it around the hangar module and it was really fun. But I don't know what use it would have today when this is better in every way, shape and form. Take a friend with you, put your guns in the gun racks, take it out of the back of a fat Lancer and go on a bunker run, whatever it might be. But these next two are gonna be the mainstay of early mining in the game, especially planetary mining. This is the Rock and Rock DS. The DS used to be useless, it's not anymore, it's pretty cool. Take a rock, put it in the back of a Cutlass, put it in the back of a Nomad and go and mine to your heart's content and sell everything for lots and lots of money. Had Knight is the way to go. The Rock DS is just bigger, it fits in bigger ships and it is for taking a friend along with you. Both of these ships are pretty awesome, but I'd still work towards them in game. But if you do want to spend money on one of these, make it the rock because it will fit in more of the early game vehicles. Okay, that's it. I'm getting a little tired. I gotta get going and go watch the parade today. And I think this is it for day six. It was a little bit more interesting than I thought it was gonna be. And I fell back in love with the raft. So I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Maybe by next Friday, I'll have it back in one of my hangars again. Like I said, they'll probably go to my arena character since she is the hauler. All right, time to close this one out. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you are a subscriber or have just subscribed, be sure to click on that bell-shaped icon and choose all to get notified of all my future videos. And if you're brand new, use a referral code down in the description below and get 5,000 UEC and possibly free ships and other things along the way. And with that said, you all be safe out there and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. 
You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.